<laughs> now, what's up, everybody? Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the show about nothing. We're your host, June 88, Izzy Phantasma. We are back. What episode is this? Set five, six? Where are we at? Five, six? We one of them joints. We one of them joints. Hey, we, we, yeah. we, we catching our stride now. Oh, yeah, we catching. We, hey, we, got, we got the rhythm going, man. And with this man's crazy hot take that's went last episode that I turned to a short on instant on Twitter, not Twitter on uh goddamn YouTube. When it's going kind of crazy, dude. Yeah, this man, cause he just I thought I was the one that say so. He the way he closed out the show, man, that was like, bro, just why warn me. You could have warned me that that was going to get clipped. Like, you could have said, hey, no. I thought you, I, I'm like, I saw that one. Like, yeah, as soon as you said, oh, yeah, that's going to get clipped. That's going to get clipped. Yeah, I so, got the text message about it, too. I looked, I was like, oh, hell. Yeah, yo, it's got, got yeah. Uh, he got me. He, like, I have been clipped twice now. You have used me for two reels. And you went, you went, you hit a few thousand, you hit like, that, okay, we episode seven. I'm looking up right now, episode seven. Okay. First one you got, the, the one you did was a quarterback. Everybody was kind of – there was a little debacles in the uh, – it was a couple people not agreeing with you on, the, on your quarterback top five. Really? <laughs> it wasn't too crazy. It didn't go as, it didn't go as uh, insane as I thought it was going to go. But, yeah, man, we back in the fifth. We back in the – we back in this joint. We showing about nothing as always. What's been going on with you, man? Let's talk about what's been going on with everything, bro. You know, do you want to share the good news with the people of the podcast about the, uh, your new situation or what you want to talk about? What you want to do? Ooh, the new situation? Yeah, uh, man. Hey, I, hold up. Real, before, before I go ahead and talk about the new situation, uh, can you explain to me why said clip has been removed by the uploader? Oh man, I had to redo it. I had to redo it, but it's back up now. It's back up. It's back up. It's back up. It's back up. Well, it's gone. I just try to look at it. Now, it's up man, there. It's... But yeah, we back. We back. We back. Hold on, I shoot you that joint right now, man. It's back. We cool, back. cool, cool, cool. But yes, uh, shall shall we talk about the new the the new the new news the new news of the day? Oh yeah, man. Go ahead, and talk to him. Tell him what you got going on with yourself, my boy. Ah, uh, the new news of the day is that me and Berenice are broke up. <laughs> Inside joke between me and June. You had to be there. Oh yeah, you had to be there. But and sure. I know for a fact you I know for a fact that might be one you're gonna clip, so I gotta be <laughs> careful for you. No, 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 that ain't gonna be that ain't gonna be the clip. Be the clip. Mm-hmm. All right, so you're gonna say that now. And next thing you know, <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen on this episode. I don't know what's gonna happen on this episode. Let's see. But no, um, God works in mysterious ways, people. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so long story short, I've been thinking about looking for a new job because the one that I'm at right now, don't get me wrong, it's a blessing. And I'm grateful and thankful that this job opened up when it did because I was in a bad way. Uh, but when work slows down in a warehouse, it slows all the way down. And you're sitting around waiting for the work, and that's not how I like it. I don't like to sit around and wait. I like to be busy. I like to get my hands working. It helps time go by quicker. And I think you can attest that you know when you're when you're moving around and you're working, you're busy. You keep your mind busy. You know, time goes around quickly, and you're able to just go about your day. Yeah. And you know, everything's kind of peachy. But if you're left to your thoughts and it's slow and it's boring, anything can happen, right? So uh, a friend of mine that I used to work with over at a, another job, the one that I was at prior to the where I'm at now, right. uh, ran into me, literally ran into me at Walmart of all places. And I, I didn't even, Walmart. at Walmart. And here's the fun part. He, he was calling out my name. I didn't hear him. I had that feeling in the back of my neck. I had the spidey sense of tingling, tingling like, hey, something's behind you. And I just stopped and I turned around and he was right there. And I was like, oh, shoot. All right. So started talking with him, whatnot. And uh, he told me where he was at, what he was doing with work and everything else. And uh, just got me intrigued, got me interested in it. We switched, we changed, we gave each other the numbers and 
Uh, kept him in contact about what I was doing. About you, how I was, that's that's not how he told me the story, y'all. That's not how he, he told me the same story. He said, yo, man, I met a buddy of mine at who for, I used to work with. He said he knew a guy at a job that he worked at. And then yada, 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 everything started flowing. Like from the time he got the call, the number to the time he called, everything started popping. this clicking like, damn. Now, yo, man, I got it. I got it. Yeah, so, so matter of fact, I was about to get to that. 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 So, me and old buddy, we exchange numbers. I go home, try to apply for the job that he's at. It didn't go through, so I text him. I'm like, hey, I, there's something went wrong. Like, it said there's an error. It didn't go through. He's like, all right, I'm going to get in contact with my manager, and I'll see what happens. She sent him a link for an application. He sent it to me. I fill it out. I'm thinking, okay, I should expect maybe, maybe within a week I'll get a, get a word back. The next day I get an email saying they want to schedule a phone interview. I schedule the phone interview. I do the phone interview. They schedule the virtual interview with the manager herself. Two days later. I do the virtual interview with the manager two days later. Now, this is where this is where the time comes in because she tells me when we do the interview that she's going to be going on vacation and I won't be finding out like what the word is until she gets back from vacation. Um, I believe it was the 27th. That's what she said uh, that she was going to be coming back from vacation. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm working. And, you know, I'm biding my time, but I'm thinking to myself in my head, like, man, I'm, I'm just, I want to get this news. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I'm just, I'm wondering about it. Well, the 27th rolls around. I'm at work. I'm just getting back from lunch. Like, I'm about ready to go back in. I get a phone call from the manager. And she tells me she wants to bring me in. She wants to hire me on. But I had to fill out an application because the one that she sent me was for a different position. So she was going to bring me in for another. She wanted to bring me in for a position that was for another position. The same one that uh, my buddy of mine that had talked to me about. Right. Fill out the application. I text her. She gets the job off her rolling. She gets the job off her rolling. La, 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 la. Drug test. Background check. Background check already came through clean. Drug test. Probably got to wait till like maybe next Wednesday, Thursday. But it could be sooner. But with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here by announcing and I done put my two week resignation, my two week notice in. I put it in yesterday. So it is official. It is in writing. It is signed, sealed and delivered. I I am. Here I am. Michael McDonald. You know that song? Steve Wonder. You said signed, sealed and delivered. I had to do it. That's a great. That's a great song. That's a great song. I like that. That's. A- this is what we call it. <laughs> my <laughs> my family. My family has this saying called a called a squirrel moment. Hey, squirrel have you seen the movie Up? Yeah, no, I haven't seen Up. You haven't seen it's a it's a cartoon movie. I know. It's I, I, I know. that's floating with the balloons. I, I know about it. I've never seen it. I never. Okay. So the main character is an old man, and there's like a little boy who's involved. He's like a Boy Scout, but he gets like whiffed away in this adventure by accident now the backstory and i'm gonna get back to my thing the backstory behind the movie up the old man and his wife they like traveling around but the old but the old man's wife got sick and so she died but the house that he lives in um the house that he lives in you know they've had it for a long 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 time and it yeah, when the story starts and the cartoon movie takes place, like the house that he's living in is in the middle of a city, and the city's been pretty much built up all around him. And the land that he's that his house is sitting on, um, they've been trying to get this land to build in that area, but he doesn't want to budge. Like he doesn't want to move, he don't want to budge, he don't want to do nothing. Until one day, he uh, he concocts this plan, and pretty much just takes off. Get to the moral of the story, Izzy. Get to the squirrel moment. Okay, okay, okay. There's a dog that's involved in this movie. His name is Doug. And like he's like the there's like a bad guy who's got like a bunch of dogs. Well, the dog named Doug is different from all the other ones. 
See, all the dogs that are mean are like Doberman Pinchers. This dog right here, Doug, he's like a golden retriever. And um, he has these things called squirrel moments where he'll be like talking with somebody. And like he'll see something and immediately he'll be like, squirrel. And then cut right back to the person. So you really so, so you said I had a squirrel moment. That's, you said yes, you did. You had a squirrel moment because I was talking about like I hear like sign sealed and delivered. You go into a song, and I'm just like, I mean, you alley hooped. It, it was alley hoop. So it, it was either I wasn't it, intending it, it to be alley hoop like that, but it was, it was either ignore it and act like it did, like it didn't. Do happen. you want me to get the mask? <laughs> I will get the mask. Continue with the goddamn story. <laughs> I will do it. I will put the mask on. Let's get the, get the goddamn story, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sign still delivered. Don't you start singing. <laughs> Don't say nothing. <laughs> Go ahead. Your boy has a fish, is officially moving on from the warehouse work. Bro, eight years of warehouse work. I had to do the math in my head. Eight years. Eight years of warehouse work, and I'm officially gonna be done with that. I will be working with Geek Squad. Geek Squad. I'll be working with the Geek Squad. And you want to know what's crazy? I got a text message today from someone that works at like the warehouse I was at prior. They just texted me saying that they opened up three positions for the spot that I was working in prior. Damn. Like, matter of fact, uh. Yep, so just posted a job. They just posted a job listing for three uh, positions for the first shift. Damn, and, uh, we lost our best worker. <laughs> yeah, they did. My but, man. but it's crazy. But you know what, though, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was talking with the folks today, and you know, pretty much is like you know it's it's always good to take a break from things that we've always been doing just to see exactly what else we can get our hands into what else we can you know do and learn and see what else we're good at so this is going to be a big opportunity for me and i think this is something that could lead into a lot of opportunities open up some doors and uh i don't know it's just the more i think about it the more excited i get because i'm like man like what like this is different yeah i told you before, like, when we, I told you, like, bro, you don't want to be working at that goddamn warehouse your whole dang Like, you probably want to move. I said, man, you know you want to move up and do something different. And lo and behold, something different happens. So, yeah, like, and, it's, go, and it's something that I wasn't even looking for. <clears throat> that's, 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 how, that's how it always is. What did I do? It's like when I told you about the show I got going on next week. Oh, I was, great. How's that? How's that looking? Good. So... That's at the that's sweet at the tooth. sweet tooth. Yeah, sweet tooth hotel. So like I'm told. Hey, real quick, if you are in the Dallas Fort Worth area, if you are going, if you have anything planned or if you have nothing planned at all, be sure to check out my man June 88, Sweet Tooth Hotel, the open mic, the that that whole show about nothing esque open mic night, that concert that he's gonna be putting out there. Show some love and support for the man. Show it. Show some love, support. Go get tickets. Go support the man. Go support the homies out there. I wish I would be able to make it, but he'll uh, be at, he'll, he's gonna be at one. But it's like I'm gonna be out there. I, I promise you. We 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 will link up. Hey, who knows? We might pull off a show about nothing live and direct one day. You never know. Oh yeah, and it's like when I got there, I was trying to get there before it didn't work out. Then, like I said, I was Bible study got done. Then. Went to go do something, got a text, yada 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 show, cool, all that stuff happens. I went, I literally said, you know what? This show ain't never gonna happen here. I said, forget it, whatever. I'm not worried about it. You know, good Lord said otherwise. Like, oh snap, this this is what's happening. Bet. So it was like the and, crazy uh, part, the crazy part about that show that you were talking about. You texted me or you had told me about this. And you were like, yeah, man, like that when she when the person called me about the, the the venue and whatnot, she was like, I had your name on a sticky note. 
That way, when we opened up, you were the first one I was going to contact. Right. That's when you true. told me that, I was like, won't he do it? Yep. And it's like, I was, it's like, it's so smooth how it's going because uh, shout out to Jensen. She's the uh, owner. Because on some sites, it's, she, she referred to herself as co owner, co founder. Yeah. And she said she's found. I don't know which one is which, but co founder, whatever. I don't know who's all involved, but I know the big boss. So the big boss. <clears throat> so I had to do all this um paperwork, you know, all the W4s and all this other stuff, paperwork to do. So I I sent that off because I just sent that off yesterday. And I sent the other stuff off the day before a few days ago. And I'm like, I was gonna wait. To just fill that out till I got that. So you know what? Screw it. Let me go ahead and do it now. So I ain't got nothing to do that day. So everything is like moving. Everything is moving pretty good. So it's like, yeah, this this is like, but like I said, that was something I wasn't even looking for. I wasn't even thinking about it. I have I had totally forgot about it. I was like, All right, ain't no show coming up this year. So ain't no ain't no spring shows. So I wait next year. I do something for the summer back in the fall. But now nah, this is this is what we got going. Hey man, I. Lo- I'm excited for you. I'm very excited about this show for you, bro. Like, this is, like, if, if everything is lining up the way that it's lining up, like, bro, it, it's going to be something special. And like I say, me and two was talking, like, this is like, how can I, this, 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 this one feels totally different than any other, any other show I've done before. Like, really? This, this feels like back in the, IBK days, first when we first started rocking the Deep Ellum days, like this one feels like it don't feel like as stressful as the December show mm. because we had to come up on some bread for this venue. Like it was like it wasn't a lot, but it was a lot. It's a lot for one person, but splitting it three ways wasn't. It's still a lot, but it's still like man in. And we and, did recoup, and we did recoup but, from it. Go ahead. So for for this, okay. So you're talking about the IBK, right? The one in Deep Ellum. Yeah, IBK was the first was our first wave from like 2016 all the way. Sheesh, we ran that joint for a long time. Yeah, that was like that was the main spot for y'all. That was the, the main last show we did was like 2000, and the last show we did there was 2018. And I know y'all traveled around, did different venues and whatnot. Now, yeah. Sweet Tooth Hotel, for the people that for the people that that are like are gonna be going to the show or that maybe don't know how this works in the in like from behind the scenes, a lot of these shows that June likes to throw out that he that he plans, they have to come out of pocket, they have to pretty much bring their own stuff and pretty much they go about it their own way. See, that's but if, the Hold on. But if I, if I was corrected, if you told me correct, Sweet Tooth Hotel told me that y'all don't got to come out of pocket, that they take only revenue from the ticket sales, correct? Like, look here, let me tell you. Yes. So that was a good part. So, like, mostly venues that we use, they have, they're built for what we do. So they got the mics, the, all the plug in, they have everything. So you right. just in the venue. But the issue with me is, I'm like, I was, let me, when I tell you, I always fuss at people for not asking questions and assuming I was like, before I even agreed to the, like, are we paying for anything for this show? The girl like, nothing. You're not coming out for nothing. I'm like, I asked them like five times, what are we paying for? Like nothing. We just get a percentage of this. And like I said, I whatever myself out of any situation. I'm like, cause I go on like, Ticket sale, like, all right, y'all get a percentage. I don't really like that, but like, I'll bite the bullet. I'm like, eh, whatever. It's, it's like, whatever. So now it's cool. I, right, whatever. I know the people, they cool, they friendly, email them all the time. And it's more like on the sense of like, oh, this is easy work, pretty much. So, I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really no big deal. So, it's like, the vid- when you hear the Sweet Tooth Hotel, it's not what you think. That's what I want to tell people. 
It's not a real hotel, y'all. <laughs> I've seen the just look it up. Look up Sweet Tooth Hotel and you'll see what he's talking about. I've seen the venue and the joint it's, looks nice. It, and it's like it's hotel themed, so they got like I think they got like eight rooms in there, and every room is themed as something else. Cause we was going through there and altitude was like, man, I wish they had a red room in here or something like that. Go around. Open the door, boom, red room. That's where I shot the little clip for uh, balance. I'm going to go back and do something in that room, so I got an idea. But oh, yeah. Yeah. but it's like, like Izzy said, you don't even be looking for something, and the good Lord bless you with a pack. Like, here you go, like, finding $20 in your pocket that you didn't know was in there. Oh, what's this? Oh, $20. Hey, hey you know what? I, that's how I was. Oh, snap, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I was. Like, I bet. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, this, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. You know what else? <laughs> you want to know what else? It, it, it um, You want to know what, what else I could, I could throw out there that could kind of like compare to that? Talk to me. When you're playing football and oh. the other team tells you exactly what they're going to run. Are we? Are, are you? Are, that's a great segue. I like that segue. I like how you did that. And that was it for me. Hey, that was a great segue. That was a great segue. You alley it for me. Thumbs up. Me. Thumbs up. Flame emojis in the comments for that segue. Yes, sir. When you so we gonna me. talk about it? Because I because okay, so we have discussed the XFL on this channel. We discussed it when it was about to pop off. We watched the first few weeks. And we've given our critiques thus far. We're still watching it. So, you know, we're still getting a feel for how this spring league is going. But even spring leagues have controversy. And the spring league of the XFL has had its first taste of controversy. And it's a pretty big one, if I might say so. Who said allegedly because they said the other story says that he claims his innocence? Yes. Okay, so it's a so we're just gonna float it out there allegedly, <clears throat> allegedly. But this is what we were hearing. Talk to me. The guard, the Orlando Guardians of the XFL, cut quarterback Quentin Dormady after he allegedly gave an opposing team plays from the Guardians playbook. The team heard about it, investigated it. And they released Dormandy. And they also removed his stats from the XFL website. Here's my issue. Talk to me. Here's my issue. For the XFL, like what do I I've already expressed my distaste for some of the games because it's so slow. It's like it's like I wish the defense in the XFL needs to be in the NFL. Bro, let's talk about you. Can, can we talk about that real quick? How many defensive battles have we seen in the XFL alone? It's Every so single game is like low scoring until like maybe the third, fourth quarter. But like it's always just a, a defensive battle between the yeah. two teams. Yeah, it's like I love because it's so – it's like, okay, like you used to the NFL speed. Like, mm -hmm. hell, Jalen Hurts, Pat. Joe, hell, Tua, Tua, all those guys, they're going to air that ball out. Yeah, they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. Oh, they're going to air it out. Even in college, they're going to air it out. They're going to, they're going to see. But, oh, but let's, let's go ahead and take this into account as well. Yes, mm -hmm. we do love the speed of the NFL, but here's the kicker the XFL did not have. They did not have the one thing that the NFL has. Preseason. Preseason. And I understand that. And we spoke about that last week too. I'm like, but it's still like I understand it. That's not that's not my that's not the issue. It's like you would think this is week three, you're gonna open up the playbook and, and, and go for it. It's not unless you giving the playbook away, open up the playbook and just start uh dropping it from 50. Now I've seen I have seen funny clips from the NFL where like we've seen like a play sheet 
or something get away from a, a coordinator on the sideline and the opposing players on the defense and whatnot just happen to grab it and try to read it. I, there was a great clip. There was a, there was a funny there was a funny clip that I remember from uh, Buffalo versus Baltimore. Uh, I don't remember. I I don't remember who the defensive coordinator was, but supposedly their play sheet got blown out of their hand because the wind. And one of the Buffalo players happened to spot it, picked it up, and was reading it, like trying to go through it really quickly. And the referee saw it and took the play sheet away from him, as he should. I thought it was hilarious. That that was funny. But this right here, a lot of these players in the XFL, they're using this as a second chance to like maybe get back into the NFL or show the league that, hey, these guys can play. Like we got guys like P.J. Walker, Taylor Heineke, two quarterbacks who were XFL quarterbacks. They were XFL players. There's a, a, a cornerback for the L.A. Chargers. There's a cornerback for the L.A. Chargers who actually played in the XFL as well. So there are guys that are trying to get themselves back into the league or they're trying to show that, hey, look, I can play at a high level. And, you know, they're making the most of the opportunity. What kills me about this is that if this is true, this guy right here just pretty much tanked his opportunity at playing pro ball. Yeah, but he does. Because you you had the opportunity. You had it on a silver platter. Pretty much like, hey, this is your one chance to get to the league or to show people, hey, you can play. And then you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, well, you, you see, we're going to run this play here. And, oh, yeah, well, this, this our defense is going to run this type of set. Like, what are you doing? But here's my thing. What do you get from, first of all, it's now, this would probably be a bigger issue if this was like Kyler Murray giving the playbook to Aaron to, Donald to Aaron. Yeah. To like, or like to a uh, Kansas city. Ooh. That'd be a big, cause no disrespect, but I could Kyler Murray is a person that probably would do some weird stuff like that. Cause they already got controversy around Kyler Murray as it is. He don't know oh, the whole gaming thing. Yeah, like he already got like I'm not. There's no disrespect to Kyle. I'm just saying as an example. But I'm like, I right, if Kyler did it, and he already, you know, he don't read his playbook. They say he don't be studying anyway. But like, oh, you get a play. That would be a big deal in the NFL. But right. in the except for your second chance, you're throwing it all away allegedly. Like, what do you what do you possibly get from that? Well, he could probably swing to the USFL, but they just had their draft, so I don't know. But the question, what do you get from giving a playbook away at the XFL? You just I don't know. Started. Like, that's, 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 that's my question. I don't know. Like, why would you do it in the first place? Now, like I said, this is allegedly, so we don't know if it's true or not. If it's true, then, like, don't even bother trying to, like, play again because now we know. But if it's not true, this is just something that someone threw out there. And, I mean – we can say allegedly, but if the team investigated it and they cut him directly, there has to be some truth. Absolutely. But my issue is like, this is week two. It was week two yesterday, last week. Last week, week two. And you already doing this? Man. Not even week five. Not even two seasons from now. But you, you know what, though? I'm, I I will commend the Guardians for doing this so early because what if there's somebody out there in the ranks that wants to join up? They have an open spot now. They could bring somebody in. And also, um, Arlington, they changed their quarterback because Buddy was buns. Who? They they switched quarterbacks now. They Another dude is a quarterback in there. I what? Forget I got to check that out. Yeah, oh. Was- Oh, okay. So I'm gonna swing off. <laughs> yeah, so XFL, like that, that that's wild. But not as wild as this. So according to an anonymous scout, former Ohio State University and potential first round wide receiver Jackson Smith in Jigba originally planned to run in the Combine's 40 yard dash. Right. However, right. after mm-hmm. a few practice runs that clocked in at mid four eights. JSN nodded to his agent and they came to a decision to opt out of testing. 
what do you think about JSN not running the 40? Why not? Like, I feel like everybody does it. I don't, I haven't heard anybody. That's the first time I'm hearing somebody. I, so here's the thing about Jackson Smith and Jim. I don't now think look, he, this, is, this is according to anonymous, uh, anonymous scout. So granted. So again, and I'll tell you why I'm, I'm on the fence with JSN right now. Cause he opted out after the second game of Ohio State season. He never came, he came back and he like, eh. it's like, he, Wait, he never played the full season. He didn't play the full season. He was like after that Notre Dame game, he was like done. Like, he was like, uh-uh, I'm not coming back. He tried to, but was he, he hurt? I think they say he is. I ha- I think like a hamstring or something. They say it was something. It was like what he I, what it what it was. It didn't. I mean, I don't play football. I never played professionally. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like. From what it sound, it wasn't from, from what people say, it's it's not that serious. Mm. People are like, man, it's serious, like yada yada yada. He's trying like I feel like opt out, then you opt out of this. I feel like you just gonna trickle down the ranks. I don't think you're gonna get no first round. I mean, you know, what I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I still think he's gonna go pretty high. I don't think he's gonna drop. To where people think he's dropping. Good. Like, no, that, that, I don't think that's gonna happen. Cause he gonna go. He might be going in the top ten. I don't it know what everybody do the forty. Like everybody does the forty. That's like bragging rights right there, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Like to say that he had the fastest forty time out of the receivers, the defensive backs, the defensive linemen. Like to say, like, yeah, uh, this man clocked in at a. This man clocked a, at with a clocked in at a. With a uh, a four six forty, that's a that's a one quick defensive lineman. Or like this uh, this guy had a four two forty. I remember, um, I remember a couple of years back. I remember a couple of years back. Um, I was watching the draft, and Cleveland uh, they had picked up a wide receiver, and I remember uh, one of the one of the YouTube guys that I followed at the time. You know, he's doing a live commentary on the draft and whatnot. And uh when he saw the when he saw the, the wide receiver get picked up, he's like, Oh, okay, you know, never heard of him. And then he looked at the TV and his eyes lit up. He's like, Wait, this man ran a four two forty? Yeah. Really? It's like <sighs> so like running the forty, like you got bragging rights and people know your speed, but like I don't know. I mean I want to see JSN like go top. I, I'll go like go go top ten. I don't want to see him drop any drop further than top ten, top fifteen. Um, I will say though, there is one team I hope he does go to, and that's where his former teammate is at. Yep, would we'll love to see him and Justin Fields reconnect in Chicago, and you know maybe make some magic happen. Cause like I think just just. Just to feel he's a, he's one receiver away from having a season. He's one receiver and one lineman away from like really taking off. He's got, got the run game. They got the run game. They got some stout. They got some receivers. They just need one solid wide receiver, one like a, a solid one, like a solid first receiver and a solid offensive lineman, or like maybe a couple of offensive linemen to keep him from like running around and like falling on his butt in the backfield. Yeah. Just protect him, and he'll be fine. He's good, and I mean, people. Bro, he came into his own this this season. Like he turned up, like he he turned the notches up a little bit. Granted, their season didn't turn out great. Like they had like a, what three four a three and fourteen season, but that boy was putting up uh, putting up some numbers. Yeah, and it's like he was like just he like Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts came alive like that last few games of last year. And this then nobody ex- if you would have told me. The Eagles were gonna go on a tear. That right. was nuts. Oh, they won one game. All right, two games. We talked about Four. this. We talked about this a few weeks ago, where, you, where we ran down the entire schedule of the Eagles, and it's like, yeah, like they. A lot of people said that the Eagles had one of the easiest schedules. They had an easy run to the Super Bowl, but like, 
you look at some of the games they played, like there were some tough games. They they there were some yeah. games that like that Hold they got a, they had a hold on, but there were some games where they had to fight. The indie game, that Detroit game, the Jaguars gave y'all a scare too. Jeez. It's like boys. but it's like I feel like the Bears, they're gonna go to a Super Bowl or get close to an NC, NCAA, an NFC championship game. Oh, speaking oh. of the Eagles real quick. Speaking of your Eagles real quick. So uh, so Gardner Johnson, I think it's Chauncey Jar- Gardner Johnson? Yeah. Okay. So supposedly he reacted on Twitter to Jonathan Gannon, the new head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, uh, after the Super Bowl when they lost, right? Supposedly yep, he's like, well, him. supposedly <laughs> he said something along the lines of like, well, I don't know why our guys didn't. Uh, perform defensively this then the third and see uh Gardner Johnson was like y'all you didn't put us in positions to to make the plays or something like that. Yep. That's what I saw that and I was like Ooh. I feel like if we had a better defense I mean I a better defensive coordinator like that dude when he was running was insane. Like that was like bro y'all you- y'all were on fire the first half. That second half it was just like weird to watch out like the the, the switch got turned off or like Y'all just could not contain. But then again, it was like we highlighted what y'all did, what y'all what, what we highlighted the, the the things that kind of allowed the Chiefs to get back in the game. But it is what it is. We're not we're we're not gonna rehash that. Nah, but it's all good. I'm not like I said. I'm not like a. I'm not like most Eagles fans. I'm not bitter. I'm not upset. I'm like okay, we lost to a good team. I respect Kansas City. That's how I that's how I felt when when we lost to the to the Rams and when we lost to the the Chiefs like like I, I wasn't I was upset that we lost like I was upset that we lost and I had you can say Bengals fans had a reason to be upset because the calls that were called on us like it just like it seemed like we had the mystery calls out of nowhere just like dictate the game in in that in that way but I wasn't upset because I wasn't upset because like any other person, you know, they would be upset and like, oh man, well this, what if this was our only chance? The Bengals, like, I was, I was upset, but like, I was confident that we were gonna make that run, and you we here did it. I almost had it this year. Who, hey, who can, who says that we can't run it again the third year? But what I'm saying, that's why I'm not. I'm like, like, I didn't go into this season. I mean, last season. Oh, we gonna go, Shotty? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't go in there. I didn't think that. I kept on asking you when you went up when the Eagles were going on the undefeated streak. I was like, "How you feeling?" I mean, what I tell you? Yeah, like I feel good. And I was like, you know, y'all, y'all like how, you, like y'all know that y'all might drop one. Like if y'all, like y'all scared y'all gonna drop one, and you're like, nah, we we good right now. And then when y'all dropped one, finally. The first thing you said was, I thank God we lost that one because that would have been too much pressure on us. Yeah, I like that's where I'm at. And like it ain't like in college where Ohio can, State loses to like unranked teams in the last minute. And I feel like this kind of shit be like in college, <laughs> you gotta win every game. Every game counts. In the NFL, you can lose a game. You could be 10 and 0 and lose two and still be straight. See, un- unless unless you're unless you're the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills and you have an unfortunate situation and it deters and it pretty much turns everything upside down. Yeah, and, and, and I feel like with me, I'm like, all right, cool. We could do this again next year. Oh yeah. Same thing. Can, That's what I'm thinking. It's like I'm not worried about oh, we can't. As chill and as poised as, as calm as Jalen Hurts is, they believe in this man. That locker room stands with that man. Oh yeah, dude! Like after what he, the performance he had, come on now, who wouldn't? The only thing I wanted to hear, I, I, I wanted to hear him say, if we would have played, won the Super Bowl, I just want to hear him hear that. I was like, if they win the Super Bowl, I have a feeling he's gonna say. In that locker room, we still ain't played our best game yet. Oh, we, yeah. I'm like, bro, we, still, like, we just won a Super Bowl. You said we ain't played our best game yet? Bro, like, that would be like when he led – oh, God, who was it? He was with Oklahoma or was it 
No, he was in Oklahoma. I remember this one. He was in he was in Oklahoma. They had just won. They had just uh, won. Um, I want to say it was the Sugar Bowl, right? And like it, like they pretty much ran rough shot on the team they were playing against. And when they won, they asked him about his performance. He's like, they asked him like, "How you feel?" He's like, "Oh well, you know, I missed a couple of throws. It wasn't my best performance. This and that." And I'm like, "You just dropped like a forty piece on the other team, and y'all didn't." Perform well, like what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that, I like it. I like his character. Like he's so calm. Like he's it's scary when somebody's that calm. Like yeah, he's never. Yeah, everybody else be rah rah. That's why we stayed in the game. That fumble. Yeah, right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. March you know, right ran right back. Marched it down the field and punched it in himself. That's why I'm not worried about the only thing about it. This is goes for anybody in NFC, anybody in the AFC. Y'all were scared. Everybody in the NFL was scared of the Eagles. Because he wasn't talking about it. They were scared. Look, when the Eagles lost those three games, oh, the Eagles ain't won. See, we told them. Told them. I don't know. I I uh, I don't know because you're a Bengals fan. I expect you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> You want because to, we got the same thing on our side. We got the same. We I got see, the same. I'm just saying on my like, side. I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I understand. But let me just. Okay, so I'm 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 gonna throw this story out there. I heard this. I heard this on Instagram one day, and I thought it was hilarious. I think I shared it with you. you so, did. when Joe Burrow was like eight or nine years old, he's playing in like his little basketball team, right? His team was down like eight or nine was like, was down like eight points with like 30 seconds left to go. And Joe ended up somehow winning the game by scoring nine straight, including like seven straight free throws or whatever. The coach went to Joe's parents and said, this guy's a sociology major. Like he teaches sociology. He teaches like psychology and whatnot. Right. Right. So he's like, look, Joe has the, he has the, the calmness, of an EMT, a firefighter, a police officer, or a serial killer. All that to say, I'm glad he's using his talents for good and not for bad. Yeah, because like when you that calm under and, pressure at that. It's like, and I say people are scared of the Eagles because anybody else in that situation would have crumbled. Oh, they would have panicked. They would have crumbled and they wouldn't have marched down. They would have got a fourth. And, and, and once that, once you let a team like Kansas City smell blood, it's over. He Bro. didn't. But after okay, after the fumble recovery for the touch, after the the inter, the was it the was it the interception or a fumble recovery for the touchdown that got him back in the game? I forget. I forget. I know it was a defensive touchdown that got them back in. That's when the tide was turning. After they did that, they scored that un guarded touchdown they ran that putt nearly housed it it's like once they got that little hint of momentum that little sense that oh we're we could somehow claw back we can somehow fight our way back in because i've seen kansas city when they're down i've seen them when they're down and they somehow squeak a win i've seen that play out so many times so when i saw kansas city start turning the tape the tempo towards their side and their defense started like really rallying up and like just really getting after it. And bro, I was like, this could this could get ugly. Like this could either be a good thing or it could be e. And I and honestly, like we we talked about it before the Super Bowl. Like we wanted Eagles and Bengals. That's what I wanted because I knew. I wanted it too, but I'm grateful that it didn't happen. The only reason I'm saying that is because our offensive line was not healthy, and I know for a fact that your defensive line would have been running rough shot on us. It would have been a tough battle. It and would have I, been like watching the Rams play the Bengals last year all over again. I, and I say this because I kind of had a feeling going into this game what it's going to be, and I told you that everybody said it's going to be half scoring, and it was. That's why I'm not too upset. I'm like, any, like anybody else would have got demolished. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you're telling me that San Francisco would have wouldn't have uh you, you you San Francisco would have been able to handle what Kansas City was bro, all about. You believe Brock Purdy would have 
You would have stood up against that, like, bro. Had he not got his, I got, had he not got his elbow I got, busted up. I got one more. I got one more. Do you think the Dallas Cowboys would have held up the way the way Dak has been throwing? He led the league in interception. Do you think he would have held up against that? If it was for that same play, would have happened. Do you think he could have marched down that field, came back and got that mug back? No, oh, no, don't say nothing. Daniel Jones. <laughs> Daniel Jones. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Daniel Jones. No, hold on, hold on. Danny Jones. Do you think could have did that? The only man I could Kirk think Cousins? off top. Wait, I ain't done. The only man in NF two men besides Jalen Hurts could have did went back and redid that is two. It's only two. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Ooh. And the only two, excuse my language, them the only two motherfuckers that could have did that shit. <laughs> them the only two motherfuckers that could have went down that field. Ooh. You want psycho Tom? Do you want the the I'm just saying you the last care. time the Chiefs played okay. So the last time the Chiefs had played Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, right? Last time they played him in the Super Bowl. I think this is when uh the honey badger. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You remember? Uh oh my gosh, what's his name? Uh Matthew. Tyron Matthew. Tyron Matthew chirped off at Tom Brady. And I remember I remember seeing somebody saying, I think it was Stephen A. Smith. He popped up on Twitter and I saw him say this. He was like, that was a dumb idea. Because now Tom is going to target his side. And what happened? Tom Brady locked in on Tyron Matthew and was going after him. And Tyron got ate up. I'm I, I, I'm not going to mince words. He got lit up. In, he got lit. And now, don't get it twisted. I ain't trying to discredit the quarterbacks I just named. I'm just saying, in that moment, in that time, based on what I saw these other guys do, they can't do that, what Jalen did. They don't I don't do believe, I do not believe in Dak Prescott. Cowboy fans don't even believe in Dak Prescott. My dad said this one day. Talk to was, me. My dad said this one day about, about Dak Prescott. I will never forget it. It was the week of the 49ers playing Dallas. And I want to say it was the divisional round. My dad said this. He's like, I think the 49ers are going to win. And I asked him why. He's like, you don't know what type of Dak Prescott you're going to get. You don't know if you're going to get the five touchdown Dak Prescott or if you're going to get the guy that's going to just throw the ball and get picked off once or twice. And he led the league in interceptions. And like I said, I respect Dak Prescott as a man. I respect any everybody on the Cowboys as a man. But as a team, I do not respect him. I do not trust him. I said this many times. I don't trust the Cowboys. You can't. Man, you can't. I and mean, then Jerry I- Jones wants to go out and say that he doesn't believe that they'll be able to get the weapons around Dak Prescott and build around him. But if you look at the cap hit for Dak's contract. I sent you that. I sent you that. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Wait, I – I, I, okay, look. I know we're we're kind of over time right now, but I I gotta pop. Come on, come on, come on, it's cool. Okay, let me see if I let me see if I can find it real quick because Cause we got something to close out. But so we good, we good. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Where is it at? Did you send it to me? Oh, it was through yeah. Twitter. It was through Twitter. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Here I, it is. I, Here I, it is. Dak Prescott's cap hits by by year. Twenty sixteen by like point five million. 2017, 0.6 million. 2018, 0.7 million. 2019, 2.1 million. 2020, this is where the jump hits. 31.4 million. That's the franchise tag. 2021, 17.2 million. 2022, 19.7 mil. This year, 2023 will be the biggest cap hit in DAX contract 49.1 million dollars so what you're saying is 
And Jerry Jones said, and I quote, it will be hard to give Dak a supporting cast like he had at the beginning of his career. Dude, look who they had. You had him as a rookie. And Romo was out the door. And Zeke, it was that's when Zeke was Zeke. That's when Zeke was Zeke. Zeke was eaten. And now Zeke probably out the door. He trying to, he trying everything to do. He's like, nah, Zeke. Y'all boys are gonna franchise tech Frank Pollard if he don't if he don't Frank get a Pollard? Deal. Frank, yes. No, no, Frank Pollard. Wait, Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard. Frank, who the hell is Frank? Oh, Frank. I was thinking Frank Gore. My bad. <laughs> no, but like Zeke. I think Zeke. He Zeke just is out the door. He out. He just. He be like, I just bought a house out here. Like, where are you gonna have to go, baby? Hmm. Yup. Or he can keep the house. He just got to rent an apartment wherever else he go. Yeah, like, I think Philly fans want Zeke in Philadelphia. That would be crazy. I mean, I wouldn't mind. Uh, it. Zeke in Philly in that midnight. Gr- I wouldn't be mad at it. Mm-hmm. I, I like, that that right there might be nice. It'd be the one two punch Kenneth gang. Well, and you got Zeke. Hey, look, Cincinnati, we could probably go after him too. Now, like if Joe Mixon don't, if Joe Mixon somewhat get cut, you got Samaj P. Ron and you got Zeke. Are you need the one two? And all that may take is a, is, is a change of scenery. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? We've always said that. Hey, so check this out. So you, you spoke about Danny Dimes, right? <laughs> Do you know what I'm about to talk about? I know you're about to talk about. It. That's what I... <laughs> All right, I was his goddamn mind, bro. So supposedly Dan, Dan Daniel Jones got a contract offer like 35 to 39 mil. Supposedly he wants. At first, it was reported he wanted 45 mil. He wants more than that now, supposedly. And I've said, if I was the GM for the Giants and I heard Daniel say that, I would go to free agency and probably get a veteran for a two-year deal that's less than half of what he's asking. And I've talked to my homie about this one, and I've already thrown out the name already. He already knows what I'm about to talk about because this was a this one. This is some. This is a guy that I've been following his career for since he's been in the league. Good old. And I know Ohio State fans, they probably don't like him still. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We're going to talk about him. Baker Mayfield, the lightning rod of the NFL. I've said, like, the Giants could go after Baker, the Jets, but the Jets are looking at Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers. If he's not going to retire or if he's going to play, I don't know. Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. But Baker Mayfield, I would probably go after him. I'll be like, look, let me get Baker, bring him in a two-year deal, have him and Daniel compete. And then if Daniel wins that competition, let him prove his worth and then go from there. But supposedly the 49ers are looking at Baker Mayfield because supposedly they're going to be looking in free agency because they're two quarterbacks, Brock Purdy and Trey Lance. They're they're dancing around it because Trey Lance got hurt in the second or third game of the season that he was playing Garoppolo played, he got hurt. And then Brock Purdy took off like a rocket. And then when he played your Eagles, he got hurt. And supposedly he's going to have to get Tommy John surgery and he's going to be out for some time. Here's my thing. Going back to quarterbacks. Going, going, going touch back on Dallas real quick. They may be getting a new quarterback. I hear, like I said, I hear, I'm in rumbles about the quarterback from TCU. TCU. And I feel like with – I feel like I don't want to hear that Trey Lance is a bust. Not yet. Like, he hasn't had a full season to play yet. No, and it's like – then again, it's like, who knows? This man may have a Joe Burrow experience. Come back, light the game up. And Bro, that would be nuts. It's like, just, remember, just the, 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 the scary part is – the pandemic season, man goes down, comes back the next year, leads his team to a goddamn Super Bowl. That ugh. look, bro. As a okay, let me. <laughs> that is terrifying. That. Let me talk about that real quick. And he's still busting people ass. Let me let me talk about that real quick. Joe Burrow, and here's the thing: he's been in the league for. 
three years. Three of them things. But here's the crazy part. He's only played two full seasons healthy. Two. That's like the same with Jalen. When, when he played the, the year, the tw- his rookie year, the year that he got hurt, right? He damn near had over 2,000 yards passing. Yeah, he did. And then the next year goes over 3,000. And then this year he went over four. Mm-hmm. Like, and and look, I'm not going to knock Trey Lance. I'm not going to knock him because, like I said, he hasn't had a full season to play. The plan was, and if I understood this, how, how the situation played out, the 49ers brought in, they, they drafted Trey Lance. Garoppolo was going to play a full season, and Trey Lance was going to sit behind him, learn the system, get familiar with it, and then the next year he was going to take over. Right. So, and they were gonna they were gonna trade Garoppolo off. Well, Garoppolo had soldier had that shoulder surgery, so they weren't able to trade him. They kept him. They reconstructed his deal for like a year. So Garoppolo is QB two, Trey Lance is QB one. QB one goes down with a foot injury. Garoppolo steps in as QB one, leads the team, leads the team, gets hurt, and then Brock Purdy shows up and then just goes on a tear. Now look, Brock you know, Purdy played. Okay. Purdy was, played phenomenal. I'm gonna tell you this. I was. I'm not gonna lie. I had a little bit of fear of Brock Purdy. Cause I was like, this little dude is gonna pull a Nick Foles. He's going to take this team to a goddamn Super Bowl. All right. I was like Eagles. But once that, once I saw how that first half, put put the get push the glass up. Don't do this. Push him up. Push him up, sir. Sir. Sir, we're not doing this. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Did this man say he was scared of Brock Purdy? Yeah, I had a little bit of fear. This man was, was 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 scared of the of the of the Brock. Once, I like Brock Purdy because he's my cousin's former quarterback in college. And I'm like, I didn't want this man to lose his job. Cause I heard Brady's going to come back, and he may to go to San Francisco, and I didn't want this kid to lose his job to Tom Brady. So I'm like, I, I want you to play good, but not too good. <laughs> Cause I still want my team to go to the goddamn Super Bowl. <laughs> I think he played well enough <laughs> to, to, to put to prove his point. Had he not gotten hurt, I think. Had he not gotten hurt, I think he would have been QB one. Had he not gotten hurt. I'm not going to argue that. But I'm saying with Brock Purdy, like, I'm like, this dude is playing too good right now. He's like, I don't know what's going on. Mike Shanahan's that dude. Shanahan is that dude. And it's like, I'm looking at what they did to Dallas. I'm like, how? And it's like, and people like say, oh, how you lose to a quarterback, a rookie quarterback, yada, yada, yada. It's like. But that was, was, and it wasn't only that. Like, if, if you really want to pay attention to it, when Brock Purdy played against the Dallas Cowboys, that was the first time he played against it. It, it looked like that was the first time he played against an actual defense. And they gave him hell. It's like, he won, they won the game. Don't get it twisted. It was a tight game. They won that one. But, like. You can see in that game that he was a rook. Yeah, but I but see, I think Brock Purdy has that same. I don't think it's kicked in yet. I think he had that same level of intensity that Jalen has, cause they call him Mister Irrelevant. Like I right, first you, this you, man finna t- this man finna turn up and become the new Tom Brady, and that's scary. And I, and I feel like Jalen. Okay, so you got. Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow, that's the new Manning and uh, the new Manning and Brady's. No, new Manning and Brady rivalry right there. Yeah. Jalen Hurts could be what? Donovan Donovan McNabb, Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick. Yeah, I'll give you that. Brock Purdy could like maybe pull a, a Brady as Mr. Irrelevant, but turning up into like a monster. Hey. That's it's just one of them things like these. It, 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 you don't know where it's gonna go. 
Like I said, I want Brock Purdy to do good things. I want him to do big things. And I, I respect. I, lo- I dude, I love watching him. Like I loved watching him go off. I think he was phenomenal playing those games that he played. Granted, like it was like what the last four or five weeks of the season, and he just happened to turn up at the right time, and like he just he was ready. Like you never know when your number is gonna get called, but when it's called, you got to be ready. And he 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 went off. Yeah, and it's like he went and off. I. And I feel like the the Eagles in that game, the defense. I don't. That's why I didn't understand. Then we're gonna move forward. The way the defense lit up, and people were talking about our defense wasn't that great, but yo, we bodied half, the, and we led the league in sacks. We was getting eleven sacks a game. Y'all, I mean, y'all couldn't, but y'all couldn't get the sacks when it mattered most. Exactly, and I'm like, but who do you blame for that? The guy that's no longer the guy that got left. The guy that Howie Rosen said, oh, you could stay here because, uh, you know. I mean, like, of course. But then again, moving forward, what we got? What we got? Well, uh, we are at – we are officially in the one-hour mark of the show. Okay, let's wind it down. What, what, what's the last closing topic? What's the closing topic? Then we're going to get about it, man. Okay, so the last closing topic of the day. We're going to let the, the fans decide on this one. Because I, I think we were we were talking about this before we started, and officially we just couldn't come to the conclusion. Right. We're gonna double back to the XFL and the alleged quarterback conundrum that they got going on with Orlando. Right. So the quarterback, the quarterback Quentin Dormady. A lot of people on social media, when they saw the picture of the guy, a lot of people said that this dude looks like Andrew Luck. He do. That's I'm, how I'm looking at the picture right now, and I don't see that. I see a Kirk Cousins, Case Keenum, like, if you put them two together, that's what you got. So I want the fans to tell me, does this look like Case Keenum and uh, Kirk Cousins combined, or does this look like Mr. Andrew Luck? Hold on, let me Matter of fact, I'm going to zoom in his face See, so I can get a better picture. Does this man look like Case Keenum and Kirk Cousins combined, or does he look like Andrew Luck? I don't see, I'm looking at Case Keenum. I'm looking at Andrew Luck right now. Um, I don't see Andrew Luck. I don't see it. I don't see it. You say he looked like first cousins. Come on, man. He looks like th- he looks like Kirk Thuggins. <laughs> Ace Keenum. Put the picture back up. Put the picture back up. Put the picture back up. Put the picture. Okay. Last time. And then we're gonna we're gonna shut the show down. Cause like we are this is, this is, this is what you say he looked like. I mean, okay. Okay. You see it now. Okay, you got me. You got me now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. you he okay. doesn't look like Andrew. He, he, okay, he, he looked like you fused his face and Andrew Luck's face together. I don't see it. I he, don't see it. You know what? We're getting out of this been a show about nothing. This been a show about <laughs> Hey yo, this is, we we gonna let's go ahead and shut it down now. Hey, look, it's your boy Izzy Phantasmo, your boy June eighty eight. This is the show about nothing. And before we go, before we shut it down for real again next week, Sweet Tooth Hotel. Give your boy June's eighty eight the love and support. Give his crew the love and support. They have the open mic. They have that show coming up at the Sweet Tooth Hotel. Give them the information. Let them know how they can get tickets. Yes, yeah, so like I said, if you follow my Instagram, link in my bio. Matter of fact, go to Sweet Tooth, go to the Sweet Tooth Hotel website and go to the uh, events. Scroll down to March 9th, you'll see our tickets there. Um, yeah, it's gonna be from seven to eleven. It's uh, the Good Vibe Showcase slash the Boy Altitude's birthday show. So hey, shout out to the Boy Altitude! Happy early birthday to the homie! So it's gonna be a good time, and like always. Hey, matter of fact, link in the link, the, the link will be down in the description of this show for that said show. 
Link will be in the description for said show where you can get tickets. So go support the homie June 88 and the crew for the Good Vibes Showcase. This has been the show about nothing, where we talk about absolutely everything and nothing at the same time and bring you all up to speed about life itself. So with that being said, Izzy Phantasmo. June's 88. June's 88. And we'll see you later.